We finally have some next generation technology that's going to be coming to the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. Some of the stuff from AMD is extremely impressive. We're going to go into everything with AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2, which is dropping on Xbox. This is PC exclusive software and technology making its way over to Xbox and all the next generation consoles. Let's get into everything that's being talked about by AMD and also look at what Nvidia is doing in the same realm. All right, so you know the drill. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button and that like button. And if you want to be notified on future content, hit that small little bell icon. And if you want to go that extra mile to support the channel, hit that join button. All right, so I will be the first to admit that for the longest time, I've been kind of criticizing what these Xbox Series X, S, and even the PS5 consoles can do from a next generation standpoint. I feel like a lot of the software is not ready for a lot of developers. The GDK needs to be moved on. People need to move towards making things a little more adaptable for what they're building. And I know that's going to happen when the first party games start dropping for not only PlayStation, but for the Xbox especially. Because we have to admit, a lot of the games that are coming out are coming out at 1080p, or they're coming out with a lot of features that are missing, features that were promised to fans when they purchase these next generation consoles. And one of those big features is FSR 2.0. Now I know a lot of people are wondering, what is this? Well, if you've heard of DLSS, which is the competitor software from Nvidia, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's basically the software which gives you a lot of performance at resolution scaling. Now, a lot of games have been using this on PC already. If you look at games like God of War or games that have DLSS enabled, you are getting massive frame rate boosts at resolution scaling and it looks stunning and AMD has a competitor to this called FSR 2.0 which is coming to Xbox in fact let's look into what Jason Ronald one of the Xbox executives has to say about this on Twitter excited to continue to partner with AMD and GPU open to provide the latest techniques in graphics performance to game developers on both Xbox and PC FSR 2 samples are now included with the GDKX for Xbox developers. Now, I know what everybody's thinking. Are we finally going to start getting some of these next generation experiences that we've all been waiting for? And I have to say, yeah, I think it's about time that Xbox starts utilizing what this console can do. Because we have to remember, running games at 1080p 60 on the Xbox Series X is almost a slap in the face to a lot of people that are playing this game. This console can easily reach 1440p or 4K resolution and still hit that 60 FPS. The CPU in there is insane. But I want to go into what AMD is bringing to it. I want to go into what Jason Ronald is talking about. Here's what's being talked about in one of the articles. In a new tweet by the GPU Open team and Xbox's Jason Ronald, AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2 is dropping its PC exclusivity and is making its way to Xbox consoles. Xbox development teams have already received the upper scaler and are actively testing it right now for future development in games. Xbox consoles receiving FSR 2.0 support include the Xbox Series X and S as well as the previous gen Xbox One console. Besides the Steam Deck, FSR 2.0 integration with Xbox marks the first time AMD's new temporal upscaling will be used outside of the PC ecosystem. Time will tell how prominent FSR will become in Xbox games, but there is huge potential for version 2.0 of the tech to be a big hit on Microsoft's gaming console. And this is what one of the biggest things I wanted to talk about is, is that yeah, a lot of this stuff that's coming in is exclusive to PC. It's why you see a lot of great performance on PC because they have all this technology integrated within it. Now it's coming to the console. That's the most intriguing thing outside of the Steam Deck, which Steam works a lot with PC because there's PC centric platform. They have this coming to the consoles for Xbox exclusively right now. And I have to say, I'm excited to see it. You can tell that Xbox is in the background working hard to get these consoles to be where they should be, which is at some of the highest resolution, some of the highest fidelity and giving us some of the best performances we have and will ever see on a console. That's what we need to remember. A console's lifespan is very long. So a lot of the GPUs in there tend to be out of date over a couple of years. Things like super sampling are something that happens over time to help mitigate that age process. And that's what these are gonna be used for. And in fact, 
it's talked about right here how common the resolution scalers are for consoles in general. Resolution upscalers are incredibly common to see on consoles such as the Xbox. Due to the incredibly long lifespan some of these consoles have, upscaling is almost a necessity for ensuring the console's GPU does not become obsolete within a few years. Almost all Xbox and PlayStation games have some form of upscaling, whether that be a competing temporal solution that is an FSR or checkerboarding in order to hit a target frame rate of 30, 60, or even 120 FPS on current gen consoles at higher resolution. We can't say how much better FSR 2.0 will look on consoles, but presumably, its temporal algorithm will be at least on par with competing for temporal solutions already on the latest Xbox games and almost certainly better than checkerboarding with its more simplistic upscaling algorithm. And that's what everybody needs to understand is that pretty much almost every single game out there kind of uses some form of upscaling resolution. They just have to so they can meet the performance they want to meet. This is across all consoles and all PC and everything that you've played probably has some form of that and the algorithm within FSR 2.0 is just that much better. Just like Nvidia has done for a very long time with DLSS, they've been pushing this hard because you do get a massive performance boost. A big example of this for me was Guardians of the Galaxy. I played that on the PC and I was getting some 60 to 70 frames per second at 4K resolution with all the bells and whistles on my 3090. But once I enabled DLSS and put it on balanced or performance, that's when things went crazy. It went up to 110 to 120 and 100 frames. It was just sitting there between 100 to 120 frames. That is a massive boost in frame rate. And that's having everything all the way up, putting all the resolution scaling up, putting the 4K up, everything and ray tracing. And that's what that DLSS did. It made the game that much more smooth for me as a gamer. That's what's going to happen with these new consoles. A lot of these new consoles have a great tech in them. And this is why Xbox waited so long to start manufacturing them because they wanted to get a lot of the architecture and technology that is the most updated on that console. It's what the PlayStation 5 didn't do. Now, PlayStation 5, don't get me wrong, has some great upscaling. They have a lot of good features on the console, but it's these other features that are going to start coming to it that we're going to see. Just like Xbox, just like PlayStation, they're going to get all these updates that really push the console forward, and we're going to see some stuff as console gamers that we've never seen before. But it isn't going to be a cakewalk, I do have to admit. Developers need to implement this, and it's hard to do that with some of these resolution scalers because there's a lot of data involved. In fact, here's what's said in the article about how this is going to be implemented. But the biggest hurdle will be in developer integration of FSR 2.0, which could be quite problematic for many titles. FSR 2.0, more advanced temporal solution, requires additional data that might not already be included in the game engine, including depth buffers, motion vectors, and color buffers. This additional data can take much longer to implement than FSR 2.0 itself, which will extend the development time of FSR 2.0 implementation. The only exception to this will be games that already include a temporal upscaling solution, meaning these additional data points will already be available in the game engine. All the developers need to do is add the FSR 2.0 source code to the engine. That's something that I have to talk about because for the last two and a half years, these consoles have been out. We have to admit a lot of the technology on them hasn't been coming in very well. It's been coming in pretty hot. There's a lot of hot fixes, patches, games are dropping at 1080p and then getting you know upscaled later and then all this stuff. So I want to know how long it's going to take developers to implement this because I think putting FSR 2.0 itself in is going to be easy. But all that other stuff, gathering all that data for the engine to actually use it properly is going to take a very long time. So I'm not expecting FSR games to just drop automatically and just boom, it's going to work on every single thing. No, I think it's going to take time for developers to implement this. And I think Xbox has been working with AMD in the background for some months now, if not years, to get this to work as great as possible. And I think they're working a lot with the first party Xbox game studios to make this happen. There's some games like Grounded and other first party studios that are using this technology, not 2.0, but other FSR supplements to make their games run better on the Xbox Series X. So I expect that to happen over time. Now, I know that sounds kind of weird to say because you're talking about this technology right now and they're announcing it, 
but I think they're announcing it that it's ready for the GDKX and they're going to give it to a lot of developers to work with and over time they're going to gather that data. That's the whole point of this is give developers a heads up, tell them, hey, this is ready to go. Give me the data that we can use to help you implement this easily. And that's the whole point. And that's what's surprising to me is that this FSR 2.0 should have been there for a long time, but it's also going to be able to be used on Xbox One consoles, which is brought up right here. Perhaps the most surprising announcement from the tweets is FSR 2.0 integration with Xbox One and its much older hardware compared to the Xbox Series X and S. On the PC side of things, FSR 2.0 already has a quite rigorous minimum GPU requirement at 4K with an RX 5700 and an RTX 2070 and a GTX 1080 and RX 6500 XT for 1440p making us wonder if the Xbox One's GPU can handle such a compute heavy upscaler. Now, I know what people are thinking. Oh, my Xbox One's gonna get a great lifespan. No, I still recommend you get an Xbox Series S or an Xbox Series X because the Xbox One is going to become obsolete. You're not gonna be able to play next-gen console games on there. And we're getting to that point where these games are only going to be on the Xbox Series X. I mean, Starfield is next-gen exclusive, same with Redfall. All these games that they've announced, you can tell they're moving forward with the technology and the hardware so get prepared for that but it is cool to see that your Xbox one consoles is going to get some of these features and they might even get some games working at 60 FPS or just 30 locked and keep it there and get some better visual fidelity on there while keeping it at 30 so I'm looking forward to everything that's coming out I can't wait to see what AMD and Xbox are working on because I have to admit a lot of the features on the console have been disappointing to me in general I know they talk a lot this is another part of them talking Jason Ronald coming out talking about the technology coming to these consoles but overall i want to see this technology be implemented and used in the games that i play that's the only thing that matters to me you can say all the numbers you can say all the features are coming but if they're not implemented and adjusted correctly for the games that are coming out right now especially the most popular games then I'm going to get really annoyed. I'm going to get really frustrated with all these updates and all these upgrades because they're not doing anything for me as a gamer just yet. When I play on my PC, DLSS, if it's on there, works perfectly. And that's something that I've been doing a lot of. I've been playing a lot on my PC because that's where a lot of the fidelity and all the features are being implemented. When I go on the Xbox Series X, a lot of these features for some games are there and it runs smooth and it runs beautifully and I have a great experience. But other times, it runs at 1080p. And then it does this, it's a mixed bag. And that's not what I want for my console. I want a set experience. That's what consoles are. They're set experiences when you plug in, you play, that's it. And I wanna see that more with the features being implemented because that's what I paid for when I bought these consoles. So I'm glad that FSR 2.0 is coming. I'm glad that a lot of the features are starting to come out, but overall, I need to see them in practice. I need to see them executed because that's me as a gamer. That's what I wanna see. So overall, let me know what you think. Do you think we're gonna get FSR 2.0 on some of the biggest games this year? Do you think it's gonna take a couple years for this to actually be implemented? What do you think Xbox is working on next when it comes to features? Will we see some games come out at 1080p still or will this FSR 2.0 help mitigate that problem? How far can this go and what type of performance will we get with some of the first party Xbox games, not to mention third party Xbox games? So let me know what you think down below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button and that like button to support us out the channel more than you know. And give me a follow on Twitter at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my latest videos. Plus, I love interacting with everyone there. So get on Twitter and let's talk about gaming. Also, follow me on Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Zalker87, just like my channel name. See what games I'm playing and let's compete in achievements for the month. So right now, I've been playing nothing but Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I think I'm about like 60 hours or 55 hours in. I'm having a blast. I stopped doing a little bit of the side quests because I have to admit, those are just not good. Their side quests are nowhere near, and I mean anywhere near what Odyssey had, what Witcher had, and a bunch of other games had. I'm actually very disappointed in the side quests. I find them very mundane and boring, and they take a couple minutes, or you're just running around solving a dumb puzzle. So I'm over that. I'm just going through the story, and I'm having a lot of fun, and if I run into some cool side quests, I run into them and I do them, but I'm not seeking them out. Overall, the game is a lot of fun. I like the combat. I'm having a great time with it. It's a pretty epic story, but I think they could have shaved off 20 hours from this game and it still would have been even better. So let me know what you're playing though. Are you waiting for something on your Xbox Series X, S? Are you on your PlayStation 5 playing something? Or are you on your PC playing something like I am? Let me know down below because that's what we're here for. It's to talk games. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And until next time, remember, enjoy your gaming. Later.